Baylor University, just to give you a little bit of background on us, um, it's a, the name is really well known in Texas. Uh, it's becoming better known outside of Texas. It's actually the oldest university in Texas. It was uh, established uh, in 1845 before Texas became a state. Uh, so um, we have a long history, as a lot of universities in this region do, of teaching heritage speakers uh, in our classes but not necessarily teaching for heritage speakers uh, or doing it well. Um, and our university uh, has, um, uh, and I'll give you a little bit of history a little bit later on, but um, you can see the uh, population of our, um, of our, uh, our breakdown, our ethnic breakdown, 16% uh, of our student population is Hispanic Latino. Um, so you think about your own uh, situations and um, where you are in terms of your institutions and what percentages you have, that will, af that will affect, um, I think, the attitude of students and faculty potentially um, towards Spanish as a heritage language as opposed to Spanish um, as a, uh, a second language. Um, so. 16%, now we know, as we saw in the presentations this morning, that that doesn't mean that 16% of our um, Latino students, or excuse me, 100% of our Latino students, 16% of the total student population, are uh, heritage speakers. Um, and, uh, but it's interesting, when we went and did the survey, uh, we found out you know, a little bit more about um, our population that may be heritage speakers that certainly have bilingual uh, parents or monolingual Spanish-speaking parents, um, and so we had some more information on that. So um, one of the one of the things that might come out of this for um, folks who are trying to get programs going or are trying to, which is what we were doing really, is to kind of fix a program. How do we how do we fix this? Uh, is to find out who your students are. 